Hello again. Inside this magical IKEA storage box thing, I have some more broken eBay rubbish. So I bought this back in March this year and I paid £15 for a job lot of controllers. Now the it said they were PlayStation 2 controllers, which most of them are, but there was a couple of Super Nintendo ones in there. So I'll just show you what I got. Ta-da! So I have already opened these. Um, I did it back in March before I'd even started doing any videos because I was particularly interested in this one here. This is the SN, well, it's QuickJoy SN Pro Pad for the Super Nintendo or the Super Famicom. And I, I had one of these when I was um, when I was a child, and it brought back some uh, some real fond memories. So I wanted to fix this one up, and I did it um, like I say a few months back. And I also pimped it, I because this was massively discolored inside here. It was it had gone all brown and and a bit minging. So I sprayed it racing green or whatever color green that is and I, I think it looks really cool and it works really well that's the main reason I bought this lot I wanted that because I noticed it on the picture so once that's done I'm left with all this other stuff um, and I've been meaning to do something with it for ages so I thought oh there's another Super Nintendo one um, well I think the rest of them are, are PlayStation well that looks like PlayStation 1 so maybe PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2, that's a PS2. So let's get all these out, let's have a look at what we got, first things first. Controller number 1, PlayStation 2. Obviously it's got a problem with this left analogue stick. Everything else feels okay on that one. Controller number 2. Also, PlayStation 2. The analog sticks look okay on that one. Okay, so I don't know what's wrong with that one. Oh. Something rattling around inside it. And another one. Also has something rattling around inside it. Analog sticks, I think, are okay. PlayStation 2 again. Now I like this one because it's, it's obviously silver. Right. <laughs> they all seem to just have the same something rattle around inside them problem. And another one. Same problem. Number six. Guess what? And then we have this one, which... I think he's a PlayStation 1 controller, I could be wrong. Not sure what's wrong with that one. And we have another one of those. And then we have this aftermarket one, which I've never seen before, which has tested and an unhappy face written on it, uh, which none of the others do. A PS1 digital controller. Yeah, it looks like a cheap one. And then finally we've got this Competition Pro Super Nintendo Super Famicom controller. Um, which is actually alright. Quite spongy. And also this, which is pretty cool. So it's, a, it's an extender, isn't it? Controller extension cable. Which is, uh, which is nice. Okay, so here we have them in all the glory. So we have six PlayStation 2 controllers, two Super Nintendo controllers, three PlayStation 1 controllers. So let's start with the PlayStation 2. Let's, uh, let's have a look at, at these ones first. I suspect the problem is very similar on all the ones that are rattling and the analog stick these replacing on one. But I'm hoping I can do all my testing on this little PS2 machine here. Uh, so let's let's power it on first. Yeah. 
and let's insert the first controller. And this is one of the rattly ones. Well, down works, up doesn't. X works. Yeah, up doesn't work. And last but not least, we've got the silver one. Oh, X works. D pad does not work at all. Okay, this is the one that I really want to get working because this is my favorite one. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to do that. Right, so that's all the PS2 controllers. Uh, there might be more faults than that, that was just a very quick test. So let's move on to the PlayStation 1 controllers. And let's start with the aftermarket one with the unhappy face on it. An unhappy face with good reason. And this is the last of the PS1 controllers. And this one does nothing. Okay, let's do the Super Nintendo ones. This is the Competition Pro. Okay, we've got no A button. Yeah, I think it's just the A button. So I don't need to test this one because I know this one already works because I've already fixed it. From memory it was just uh, none of the four buttons here were working but it was just some corrosion. Uh, have I mentioned that I love this one? I think I have. Okay so now I'm going to take all of these PS2 controllers apart and see if I can see what's going on with them. I'll start with this one that's got no life at all. To open them up we've got six screws on the back and then you just pry them apart. It's fairly straightforward. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through filming that. I'll just do it and then when we get it open, we'll come back to it. Okay, now we're in. Let's see if we can see anything obvious. Uh, there's nothing immediately obvious. It does look like that ribbon cable comes out. I don't want to force it, but there's no um there's no clip on it, there's no latch of any description, uh, and it doesn't pull out easily, so I'm not going to force it. I'm guessing it is all attached. But yeah, no idea why that one's not working. Alright, for this first one I suspect it's a, it's a broken cable. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check for continuity from this end of the cable to the circuit board here. The connector is actually soldered on. It's not it's not removable. Well it is, obviously you have to remove the solder, but so I'm just gonna quickly do that, see if there any of them are not connected. No, they are all connected. So it's not the cable. Right, okay, that makes it a bit more interesting. Interestingly, or not, depending on which way you're inclined, uh this one's different inside, so that's got like a the ribbon connector is just like a pressure fit on there, whereas this is all soldered on. So I've just taken the and the other one apart that was completely dead, that had no life in it at all, and I've just checked for continuity from the lead to the circuit board, and again everything's fine. Interestingly, again it's um, it's slightly different. So whilst it's got the same connector at the top up here. The chip is different. This this one's got a smaller chip than this one. Uh, just the layout is is again slightly different. Um, I wonder if they're all going to be different. <laughs> so I think it's going to be really difficult to sort of swap parts over if I do need to. But anyway, 
I don't know what's wrong with these two at the minute. I'm going to keep looking at them. I've been going around the capacitors looking for shorts, see if the chips are um, a dodgy, but I can't see anything. I've had a quick look for dry solder joints again. Can't really see anything. Doesn't matter if these bridge, I'm only trying to get, get it off. Okay, let's try and take this one off this completely dead one. This has got no life in it at all. So I'm hoping that the the connector is okay here and that the button board works okay. So I'm just going to put loads of flux on. And then same again, I'm going to add some low melt solder. I'll probably leave it on this time instead of wicking it off. See if that helps it out. And I can always clean it up afterwards. Okay, let's try that. Let's add some flux. And I'm going to turn the heat down this time. I'm going to try and do it on 200. This is all trial and error. <laughs> there we go. It's off. The microscope moved, but it's off and it looks, it doesn't look like there's a much damage to the plastic there, I'm sure that'll clean up, don't worry about the bridges, I can get rid of those once I've got this off, I'll just let that cool down, okay let's take that out. There we go. Right, I'm just going to try and remove or prep these legs. So I'm going to remove that big solder blob. Ow, that's hot. There we go. Right, let's try and get this one onto the one that had no up. Let's see if we get an up. 
Well, let's see if we get anything. More to the point. Alright, I'm just going to start by just prepping these pads. Remember, I already put low melt solder on, so I actually think they're going to be okay. Yep, let's add a bit of uh, fluxage. And then we'll feed this through. Because once it's on, it, it, it's not supposed to come off. This is where I need uh, three hands. I'm just going to try and get one end on. Is that in place? Yeah, kind of looks okay to me. Right, let's try and uh... oh, it's moving. It's just this uh, second pin, everything else is on. Let's uh, clean that up and let's see if we've made any difference. Right, so what do we think? Do you reckon that's going to work? <laughs> no. It's doing nothing. Oh, it moved then. The analog light comes on. So I'm beginning to think that all these problems are the same. I think it's this. Um, I think it's this board. I think they must all uh, they must break down. I mean, these are old, old devices, aren't they? So that's three now, and the problem has been the same. I'm going to be lucky to get one working one out of these. I think. I think it's fairly obvious why this one isn't working. It's all eaten away here. It's all corroded away. So those tracks look like they're uh, they've gone. But let's check them on the multimeter. Right. So we've got no continuity from this point to this point, and we've got nothing from this point well it goes into this blob chip in fact but there's nothing there I don't think yeah see it's all looks like it's all eaten away there doesn't it don't think there's anything left Or is there? Oh, okay. I wonder 
wonder if I can just clean that up and then just tin it with a bit of uh, a bit of solder. I don't know whether that would work. But I think here as well we've got a problem with there must be a break somewhere because there's no continuity between this one and this one. So there's, there's no continuity between there and there. So it's gone here. I wonder if I can just bridge that with a bit of... Uh, just a bit of solder. Can't be worth a try, isn't it? Let's try that before we go any further. Nothing for it to really stick to. I don't know that's worked. Yes, it has. Let's see if we can get this in shot. So from this pad here to here. We now have continuity. Excellent. Okay, so now we just need to worry about this. This is where the buttons make the connection, isn't it? So might need to scrape a bit more of that back. Right, it does look like it's just there's a bit missing here. But it looks like the rest of it is 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 still there. It's just badly badly corroded. Might be better with the fiberglass pen actually, but let's see how I get on with this. You know what, I'm gonna try that. Let's put some flux on. Let's see if we can get a thin coating. I 
I'll just try and wick a bit of that off actually because it's um might not be very level. That looks okay to me. I wonder if we've got continuity. I can't check from here to the chip because the chip is well, it's under that blob. Uh, but I don't want to go messing about with that really. It looks okay, assuming there's not a little break anywhere. Do you know what? I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that. See how we get. I'll just clean it up, and then we'll pop it back together. Right, before I do, I've just cleaned it up, and I've just been looking at um, at this point here, and that's an incredibly thin <laughs> connection there, isn't it? So I'm just going to run a tiny wire from here to here just to make sure because I don't think that's going to last very long. Double check that. Right. I'm happy with that. I think that'll last a bit longer. What the hell? Ah. So this is the cheap PS1, the not a genuine one. And I think someone's been in here before because they've sort of wedged some uh, cardboard in here for some reason. Um, hmm. I, I'm not entirely sure why. Odd. So obviously somebody's tried to fix this one before. I mean, there isn't much to it really. There's a blob chip there. And we've got ceramic capacitor here and a, a resistor there and a couple of jumpers. And then the buttons themselves. And the buttons look clean. Oh, that doesn't look good though, does it? I'm guessing that's supposed to be attached. I'm wondering whether that's just it. Let's um, let's put it back together. Right, I've just tried it. No, it wasn't that. So I'm just going to have another look around this board. See if I can see anything else. But there's nothing jumping out at me. Apart from the fact that it's cheap and nasty. Oh, that doesn't look too clever there, does it? Okay. 
don't think that will make any difference. It's just it's really poorly made when you look at it compared to the original or even the Competition Pro. It was made so much better than this. Oh, I'm not going to lose any sleep over this one if I can't get it working. No, it's not working. So for fun, like I say, I'm not bothered about this board. I'm going to take this... Uh, I'm going to try to take this blob off. <coughs> Curious as to what's underneath it. All right, not bothered about this board now, so I'm going to uh, have some fun with this blob chip. I'm not sure whether I was recording there. I don't think I was. Anyway, I've just destroyed the blob chip. <laughs> For fun. I've always wondered what was under here. Now I know. A couple of uh, traces gone there. And there isn't really a lot. I, I don't know what I was expecting, but everything just seems to go... into here and back out again. I don't, I don't, I don't know. What's this bit in the middle? Yeah. Oh well, let's put it back together and see if it works. <laughs> right, so there we have it. Out of the 11 controllers that I started with, I have five that are working. Importantly, two of those are this magnificent Super Nintendo controller right here, and this silver PS2 controller. Those are the two that I really wanted out of this, this job lot. The silver one had a problem with the D-pad, the but after giving it a good clean, that one that one worked a treat. Uh, the black one here is the one that had the broken analog stick. Uh, it turns out it wasn't actually the stick itself, it was just the cover. Um, so I just replaced that from one out of one of the dead ones. Uh, and now that one is, is working fine. Um, all the other four, which are now in pieces, um, they all seem to have the same problem. The conductive film ribbon. This conductive film board across the top where the, the buttons make contact. It just appeared to be to be broken on all of them. I did swap a couple of them out, um, but they still didn't work. So the ones that are in here seem to be absolutely fine. I think these are just degraded with age. I can't see anything immediately wrong with them, but I'm guessing it's the... Is it carbon? I'm not sure. Um, that's just it's just not making a good a good contact anymore. So, like I say, I'm not too bothered about that. I managed to get two working ones, which is more than I need for for my own my own use. Um, the PlayStation One controllers, the cheap aftermarket one, that's now in this bag. Uh, it was so unbelievably crap quality inside that I'm, I'm kind of glad that it doesn't work uh, but I did have some fun destroying the blob chip though so uh, but out of the, the, the other two, the original ones, uh, one of them is working. The other one I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it at all. I tried replacing the cable, I compared the boards to this one it all seemed absolutely fine so I might come back to that one because everything looked in really really good condition inside it but for now I'm happy that I've got, got one of them working this one, I really enjoyed this one. This had some corrosion on the board around the A and B buttons. And I managed to, to bodge together a fix, run a, a little jumper wire across the tracks that had corroded and, and sort of tinned the the contact on the board. And it's it's working fine now. Whether it be a long-lasting repair, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, the, the only thing is, I, I kind of wish that my solder mask would hurry up and arrive so that I could... You know, give that jumper wire that's holding in a bit of protection. But but for now, I'm happy with how that one's working. Overall, I'm I'm really pleased with with how it's come out. I've got lots of spare bits left over, got lots of buttons and contacts in here, got loads of the shells. <laughs> so I mean, you never know when you might need something. So I'm 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 happy with with with, with the outcome. So all that remains is uh, to give the the working ones a a final test. So. Let's play some old games.
Oh! <laughs> 